Hello again. So last time what we did was that we just made a simple quartz composition that drew a couple of images and text to the screen. But isn't that kind of boring? I mean, it's something that you could easily do in, say, Microsoft Word, well, much more easily and more effectively. So let's just go ahead and start making things move. Okay. First of all, I'm going to show you how to make things rotate. But obviously we'll need something to rotate, or else it's kind of useless. So, I'll just get the, the sprite patch which draws an image to the screen. And we'll need to just drag an image in to draw to the screen. Okay. So, we'll just open up the patch inspector and make this a little smaller. There we go. Okay. So, the way I personally like to make things rotate is by mathematically determining the angle that, that our image is at after a certain amount of time. So, to do this, we want to go to the patch library and search for patch time which tells us how much time has elapsed since we since the composition started. Okay, so after one second has elapsed, it'll output a value of one. After two seconds have elapsed, it'll output two. After 10 seconds have elapsed, it'll output 10. And well, you get the idea. So, what about if we feed the output of patch time into an, uh, the Z rotation of the sprite. So then, when one second has elapsed, it'll have turned one degree. When five seconds have elapsed, it'll turn five degrees, and so on. And in fact, if you have a look at the image, you'll see that it is rotating, but very slowly. So, let's speed it up a little. And the way we speed things up is essentially through altering the passage of time. And in order to do this, we want something called a math patch. This is another of the staple patches that you'll uh, need to use. So, just drag it in. And if we multiply the patch time by, ooh, for instance, 10, so we'll just change this to a multiply sign, feed in patch time, then times it by 10, and then we just set the output so it feeds into the Z rotation. So now, after one second has elapsed, it'll have moved 10 degrees. After 20 seconds, it'll have moved 200 degrees, and so on. So, what you'll notice is that the thing is rotating a lot faster. If you want to change the direction, then all you have to do is stick a minus sign in front of it. All right, well, that looks absolutely fine. So, what, what I'm going to show you next is just essentially moving the position of the object on the screen. So we want to make it move across. And it follows pretty much the same principle. So all we have to do at the start it is just get another math patch. We already have patch time so we can use it twice. I'll just set this to something more sensible like 1, feed in the patch time, patch time gets multiplied by 1, and this feeds into the X position, which is the horizontal position. You'll see that we don't have an object, and that's because it's all the way over the edges of the screen. So if you just stop it and run it again, you'll see that when the composition starts, our image goes to the center as normal. But what about if we don't want it to start at the centre? 
Okay, what we have to do is set the number of operations to 2. And now, what we can do is that we can add a certain value. So I'm just going to go ahead and add minus 1 to it. So now it'll start at minus 1. At, so that the ho initial horizontal position is minus 1. So if we just stop and start it again, you'll see that it appears in the left-hand uh, side of the screen. As usual, you don't have to use 1, you can use any value you want. Again, a negative value changes the direction. And you can pretty much do this for the, the Y position, the Z position, which is the in-out position. And pretty much everything, really. Okay, so next time I'll show you how to make things appear and disappear. And, well, for the moment, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and good luck.